Hey there, and welcome back to the sanctuary. It's time for our fourth ever comment of the day video here on the Lotus SMP. I can't believe we already have four episodes. And as always, we're going to take a little bit of time around this beautiful world. And in today's episode, we're going to make a little bit of a pathway over to Cops. The idea for my next episode is to make a bridge at the end of this path. But in order to do that, we're going to have to start felling some trees and get to laying some pathways. While we do that, I'm going to answer a bunch of your questions. So feel free to lead this around on in the background. And without further ado, let's get into our first question who comes from Envixie. They ask, what is your favorite ore or block in the blocky place called Minecraft? And if I'm being honest, I had to sit here and think for a couple minutes on what that favorite block would be. But after heavy deliberation, I've realized that my favorite ore and my favorite block in Minecraft is copper. Now, I would have said copper before the most recent Minecraft update. I've just really liked the idea behind the copper block with its four different state changes and you can use it in so many different ways. I think that there's something to be said about having so much utility and versatility within a specific block. And one of my favorite things to do in Minecraft is seeing different sorts of textures and patterns that you can make with all of the different blocks in the game. Imagine something like the crafter or the underside of a furnace. They all really make a huge difference and copper is like the perfect block to do that. And it's even more important now that we have the Minecraft 1.21 update. We now have copper trap doors and grates and so many different things that I haven't even gotten my hands on yet. And copper can just work in so many palettes, whether it be an orange or red colored theme or something that works in the ocean or definitely along pathways and within trees and on fence lines and all that sort of stuff. In short, Copper is a very, very versatile block. Now, amongst all of your incredible questions, I've also asked a couple of questions to myself. I think that these questions are really important to elaborate on, and I hope that you get to know me a little bit better as a person as well. And the first question from the second channel is, what is the most important lesson you've learned this year? Now, for the most important lesson I've learned this year, I would say that I haven't quite fully learned how to do it, but I've learned the importance of it. And that lesson is the importance of balance in your life, whether it be balance in your sleep schedule or your social life or your work routines, your hobbies, your passions, all of those sorts of things. It's so important to be able to have some balance. And for me, as you know, I love making Minecraft videos and they give me so much passion. I wake up with so much vigor every single morning in order to get editing or get recording, do all of the Minecraft things. But at the same time, some of you may know that I've taken it too far in one direction, and as a result of suffering a lack of balance, I ended up getting some health problems from taking on Minecraft too hard. And the reason that this happened was because I wasn't listening to the signals that I needed to listen to for balance in my life. You see, when you've been taxing your body or your brain too much, your body likes to give you feedback signals. If you've been spending too much long without sleep, you're going to start feeling tired and you're going to start seeing it on your face. If you've been alone and you haven't been social for too long, eventually Eventually, you'll start to get those pangs of loneliness and isolation. And if you've been putting off the most important priorities in your life, eventually they're going to creep back up on you. Whereas, at least for me, speaking personally, whenever I pursue all the different things that I want in balance, everything seems to fall into place. Sometimes I can get so doghearted on making a Minecraft video or doing some sort of project that I can get lost in the process and wipe that balance out of proportion. But after a couple of years of being consistent with this Minecraft thing, it seems to me that the things that you want to accumulate over time really do happen to accumulate if you just pursue it with balance. Of course, in the past, I've wanted to make these absurd, incredible projects, and I felt that in order to get to doing them, I needed to put in these insane hours and to sacrifice so much. But I've also learned that just putting in little steps, a little bit by little bit, over a consistent amount of time can also accumulate to these Awesome, just incredible projects that you didn't think were going to be able to happen. And if your goals are related to relationships, I also think that that's important as well. I know that when I started up as a Minecraft YouTuber, I wanted to be connected and become friends with so many of the big names that I always looked up to. And I think that in the past, a part of me wanted to work so hard in order to have these incredible, amazing 100,000 plus view videos that would get me the recognition that I deserved, I, or not that I deserved at the time, that I wanted more, more put. And I thought that once I had these stellar videos, I would then gain the respect of the people that I respected and admired myself. But one thing that I think I'm really learning is that the more that you just consistently put out your best foot forward, you do end up meeting the people that you 
want to come in contact with and that you look up to and that sort of thing. And it's not about just dog heartedly sacrificing everything in pursuit of that one goal, but keeping that goal at the forefront and making sure that you've balanced in mind when you do it. Because every single time when you do look back and see where you've come from, you can really be proud of it and be like, whoa, I didn't think that all these things that were going to happen through this, you know, continually, continually putting in effort. I didn't think that things were going to fabricate, fabricate the ways that they did. Uh, and that's been my experience as well. Um, but I've also learned it the hard way, not only speaking through health, but um, also um, from, you know, maybe taking it too far, being able to sit back and reflect a little bit about where I've come uh, and see that uh, it's slow growth that is making more of an impact than any of the um, doggone wholehearted attempts that I'm making that sacrifice all the balance that I have in my life, if that makes sense. Our next question comes in from Indiana Animates, who actually happened to ask this question last week, but I didn't see it. I'm so sorry, but I wanted to make sure that I could catch it in this episode here. And our question is, have you or do you have any pets? And what's your favorite food? And so currently for me, I do not have any pets. Uh, I definitely am a dog person. I did spend the entire summer cat sitting and it made me much more of a cat person, but I don't have any pets at the moment and I'm actually okay with that. Uh, I'm an elementary school teacher and so I'm responsible for 25 plus children <laughs> every single day. And so that's definitely a forefront uh, priority for me. Um, and also, you know, I really have a priority for this YouTube channel and being able to put out my best foot forward every single week and get out as much quality content to you all as possible. Um, and so I've thought about getting a dog at some point in time, but uh, given how busy um, and full I'm, my schedule and how, how much I fill my schedule <laughs> um, and how I don't want it any other way at, at now. Uh, I don't want to get a pet yet uh, so that way I can go to the gym in the morning and make sure to, to record and do all these little things as opposed to feed the dog and walk the dog and make sure that if I'm out of the house uh, it's being cared for and as someone that does work outside of the house uh, Monday through Friday I'd also have to pay for a pet if I wanted a dog and it can be expensive it can be like 35 40 50 dollars a day to have your dog be cared for when you're at work uh and so I'm just not there yet but uh, I'm only 26 at the moment and so I have plenty of more time to get a pet um and I think that within the next couple of years or so I'm definitely gonna want that best friend and that companionship I used to have a pet fish but uh, who was named Slip, actually, before I ever made this YouTube channel, which is funny. I hadn't actually thought about that until now. Uh, but eventually, I want to get a dog. But um, yeah, my prior priorities right now, all of my time and energy is pretty much set and accounted for uh, in the best way possible. And so I'm not feeling like I'm missing a pet, but I'll be ready for a pet when it does happen. And I'm looking forward to it. Our next question of the day comes from the second channel as well. The question is, what habit do you have that you think not many other people have? I think that the habit that I have that not most other people have is the ability to go into a flow state and focus on one thing very deliberately for one period of time. I can put away my phone and be distraction free and get so lost in the process and it can be so cognitively demanding but rewarding at the same time. And there's definitely a feeling of pushing through and I've grown the skill over time, uh, but it's not something that's unique to me. I think it's just a habit that you can grow about um, putting away, you know, making sure that you're not scrolling through social media and that sort of thing really just locking in when need be and you recognize the need to lock into the zone uh, and being able to do that with uh, a lot of vitality and endurance I think uh, I can wake up and grind and uh, push myself and push myself and push myself um, in a really uh, one track sort of way uh, and that's really helpful when it comes to a lot of different things especially when it comes to content creation, uh, with material collecting, I can just, you know, get lost in a cathartic way in that. When it comes to the bulkier parts of video editing, I can chunk that out and be like, 
okay, this is the project and I'm getting it done. Uh, and then oftentimes I'll even, you know, uh, speaking of the balance and that sort of thing, um, if for better or for worse, I can really um, push myself to get not only get something done within a particular period of time, uh, kind of by like um, pushing forward the expected time of completion. So if I'm like, oh, I can, I think I can get this done in three hours. Be like, what if I did it in two hours? And one thing that you do realize is that like time expands to uh, allow for that time to fill it, if that makes sense. Uh, and so you're able to um, be like, all right, I'm focusing, you know, I only have two hours instead of three hours to make this. Uh, and so it puts you into uh, uh, almost like a pressure. It's, you know, um, from yourself, self-imposed pressure, but in order to um, get things done as quickly and efficiently as possible, I think it can be really helpful to do that. Uh, and so I think, and over time, your ability to do that for longer periods of time also increases. So like my ability to do something really hard, uh, for a great example, sitting and just doing high quality replay mod cinematics, which uh, can take a lot if you want to do it really well, but can also be kind of slow and time consuming. Definitely a little bit more grunt work at the same time. For my first video, you know, I, I would do maybe an hour of replay mod cinematics and I just couldn't do any more for the day as much as I wanted to get a project done. It was just too much and I had exerted myself for that one hour trying my best. But not only now have I gotten better at making the cinematics and so it's easier, but now I'm also able to push it for a longer period of time. And so I'm able to, you know, sit down and do replay mod cinematics straight for three or four hours or just getting the annoying parts of editing done uh, in multiple hours and just sitting down and then taking a break and getting right back to it as soon as I can. Um, and being really intentional with my time uh, has allowed for that to happen. If you're curious about how I became so efficient, it can be um, for better or for worse, but I highly recommend even just using the audiobook and listening to it. You don't have to read the book yourself. I've listened to it maybe 10 or 11 times. It's called Deep Work by Cal Newport. I know I've talked about it before, but it not only teaches you the skills that you need in order to do these sorts of flow state, you know, demanding things, but also the value of it too. Uh, and as someone that's, you know, been immersed in that and the efficiency and seeing how much output I can get, um, I see that, you know, through consistently working on this habit, uh, one of my best contributions is being able to produce. Um, and so, yeah, I, I would say that that habit is really, really helpful for me. Our next comment of the day comes from Just Zay, who is a wonderful content creator on the King's Craft server. And Zay, thanks so much for asking the question. And I think that you and I may be teaming up for something special quite soon, which I'm going to keep on the down low, but uh, very excited to hang out and get to know you better and play a little bit of Minecraft with you. But Zay's question is, what kind of music do you like? Well, to start off, I would say that I definitely like listening to the music that you guys are listening to right now and that you'll find in my videos and that you'll find on my streams and that sort of thing. I used to play the cello when I was a kid and so I always loved classical music and I also dabble with the guitar, um, maybe a, a beginner at the guitar and when I was playing the cello, I was probably a, an advanced cellist. I uh, really um, loved those two different types of music, and I think that they really made me who I am. Uh, and so when I think that when it comes to my expressive side and creation, it's usually within those sorts of genre uh, or genres. But for me, when I'm listening to anything that's not YouTube related or making anything like what is my feel good music it is only an explicitly rap music <laughs> which uh usually comes as a surprise to a lot of people um it's all that i've ever listened to i love all different types of rap music and when i'm feeling energetic and i'm pumped for the gym i have specific rap music i have different rap music for the gym i have different rap music for when i'm feeling uh, chill and laid back. I have different rap music for when I'm feeling in my feels. Um, and so 
I think rap music in itself is a very pervasive genre. Uh, and it's totally, for me, an art form. And a lot of people, including my parents themselves, uh, don't like it. <laughs> um, but I, I love it. And I was and chatting with my mom the other day. And she asked me, she was like, do you think that, you know, a lot of parents, a lot of humans, when they're older, they still listen to the music that they grew up on? And that'll be really interesting. I hope to have kids at some point in time. And I don't know how I'm going to change and how the music world will change during that period of time and in the future. But um, uh, it was kind of just kind of like crazy thinking about what is that going to look like for me? And am I going to play rap music in the car with my kid? Am I going to wait to a certain age? And I listen to maybe the classics of my parents with them and then when they're older, maybe I bust out the rap music and they're like, oh, Mr. Slip is like, um, dad is like so cool, <laughs> you know? Um, so I don't know about that, but definitely my favorite, my favorite genre of music is rap music. <laughs> now, I think that this question is a very important question and it comes from the second channel. The question is, what is one thing that you think holds you back? And for me, it really was not difficult to think about what is one thing that holds me back. I would say it would be over rigidity. And by that, I mean holding on too fixed or holding on too much to a tight schedule or what I have in mind and not being able to be flexible enough. Um, many of you know that I have a specific wake up and go to sleep time Monday through Friday. Uh, or Monday through Sunday, seven days a week. Uh, I hold very fast onto how I use my time uh, and chunk block my time. And since I have so many aspirations in Minecraft and editing and this whole YouTube thing in general, on top of working multiple different jobs and as working as a teacher, it's a very pervasive job. Um, you really want to make sure that you're doing your best for our nation's youth. It's our children, right? Uh, and so it's not just like a specific specific clock out time. Uh, and one thing that's really interesting is that teachers and I w eventually want to be a professor. Uh, professors and teachers are very prone to workaholism. <laughs> uh, and so I'm always trying to get things done, whether it be uh, for normal work or for my second job, uh, running social media for an energy bar company or working for the energy bar company and doing stuff with that. And then doing all the stuff on YouTube. Um, it takes a lot of my time. And uh, not only that, it takes a lot of my energy too. And in order to get all of my uh, ideas out into the world and make things and make things happen, um, it takes a lot of energy too. And I'm totally sapped when I'm done with all of the different pursuits that I'm doing. Uh, and so I sometimes or oftentimes will struggle with the bandwidth of opening up my schedule like uh, today I'm recording in that sort of thing and then I'm recording another video with somebody else this afternoon uh, after stream or this evening after stream and uh, my best buddy and my roommate uh, where I'm living invited me to go out to like an arcade bar with him and his girlfriend and a couple of friends uh, and uh, if it's if I don't know the day beforehand and I already have my set schedule in place and I know how I'm spending my energy um, I, you know, and I've gotten very good at saying no with the things that I've prioritized, but, uh, you know, it can also hold you back from other things in life. Um, you know, I, I get a lot of fulfillment about um, everything that I get to do with you all here in the sanctuary in this wonderful community, but um, I would be lying if I said that uh, I didn't, you know, sacrifice um, an in-person social life. And uh, it's not that I have I don't have people that want to hang out with me here in the real world. I'm, I'm very lucky to have friends and people that do want to spend time, but I oftentimes will say no because there's no plan and it's kind of the last moment. And I already have uh, what's so important to me, which is making these things for you all and being the best team member that I can for my favorite energy bar in the world. And it's a dream to be a part of that company. And then it was also, it, and it is a dream for me to be a teacher. Um, and so those things are so important to me that um, I, you know, sp put specific time placement and energy placements on them. And those are the priorities. And I uh, sometimes will struggle to loosen up and 
be a little bit r less ri rigid and uh, say yes to going and having fun and as opposed to just doing work related things all the time. Uh, and so I know that and that's something that uh, I need to continue to work on and um, whenever I go out and be social and touch grass and do this stuff it's always a reminder of all the wonderful things that there are out there besides you know Minecraft and the creative pursuit and meeting new people and all of the wonderful things that uh, doing this content creation really does provide so that's definitely the thing that holds me back the most. As I'm checking the Discord, we have a couple more questions coming in from Dino and from Envixie. Envixie, thank you so much for asking so many awesome questions. Uh, I'm going to save a couple of those that you left in the Discord for uh, next week's video. Uh, I hope that you're okay with that. All the questions that you have are awesome. So thank you so much for that. Uh, but I am going to respond to Dino's question. Dino, thanks so much for hopping in and asking a question too. Now, Dino asks, what is your hobby? And if I'm being honest, doing this whole content creation thing is definitely now my main hobby. I love exercise. Many of you guys know that I love exercising seven times a week. And when I go out and I do touch grass, I love hiking. And uh, I love saying yes to invites for camping and that sort of thing. I love getting outdoors. I uh, like going out to lunch and that sort of thing, and I'm definitely a foodie nowadays, but uh, and I used to do a lot of yoga, I did a lot of mixed, mixed martial arts, I did Muay Thai last year, um, and I love switching up the exercise, whether it be sometimes I go into long distance running kicks, other times I'm in weightlifting kicks, um, and I really do uh, switch it up a lot, and so exercise is totally a hobby for me. But I would be lying if I said that I had enough time to pursue many more hobbies than Minecraft right here. And I think that it speaks to the beauty of making content and enjoying the process of making content, at least for me, when it comes to Minecraft. Um, there's so many different aspects of Minecraft to improve, to become a better, more skilled player, or just to level up in the game in ways that you haven't ever before, or to explore with new mechanics that are introduced into the game or fumble around with redstone and try to understand that for yourself or for me at this uh forefront forefront period of time uh building and trying to understand the different intricacies of building natural things and uh city designing and uh, storytelling is a huge part of it too and then on the other side uh there's such a art form to learning how to make cool videos and spending time finding awesome songs to go with it and learning how to do more specific transitions and to learn how to work with titles and do different video and audio effects and improve the craft and uh you know even thumbnail design is a different art in itself and learning how to make aesthetic art uh you know art through your thumbnails and making something that's you and uh, learning how to commentate and speak into a microphone better and try to see if you do have something to say and to share with people and all those different things. Um, they take a lot of, you know, time to learn how to do it. And I think that that's when you can see a high quality video and you're like, oh, wait, like there's a lot of high quality things there because you have to learn how to do all these different um, intertwined aspects that you never really thought you would have gotten into uh, when you started. I know that when I started, it was just like press record and play Minecraft and try to make something that's coherent. <laughs> you know, I try to do something. And then uh, the more that you understand how to make cinematics or transitions or tell a story, the more the world is your oyster when it comes to the whole art of editing and you uh, once again have more tools under your belt and so you can kind of work with it and chef up your videos even more and uh it's like the cooking process and that can be uh so fun too <laughs> um and so my main hobby i gotta say is uh learning all the different fun little things like for me i'm so excited to when i find the time for it start working with armor stands in minecraft and learning the intricacies behind that um, and also learning about how honey works in Minecraft and bees. And I know that's an old, old older thing, <laughs> but there's so many different little things that 
I love learning uh, and trying to get under my belt um, and to show off uh, and show to you all in the best ways that I personally can. Uh, so Minecraft is my hobby. <laughs> um, and I used to be ashamed of telling people that, but now I kind of like, no, all of my time is spoken for and accounted for. And I love my online community and I love getting to know people. And I love all the things, even the work related things that lead to my, you know, favorite videos, which happens to be every new one that comes out. And in particular for today's episode, the one that came out on the main channel, which is worth checking out after this video if you're still hanging out. Our next comment of the day comes once again from Invixi1, who asked, favorite book or movie? And I'm gonna answer to both of them, but I'm gonna say my favorite movie of all time, and then my favorite book that I've been reading recently. And so let's start off with the movie. My favorite movie of all time is Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which I hope that some of you guys know it could be a little bit older, a little bit outdated for some people too, but uh, when I was a kid, I just loved watching that movie, and um, there's a scene where they're all dancing in the middle of Chicago uh, with the song Twist and Shout by the Beatles, and I was like, oh my gosh, this would be the dream, and as a kid, I always had a crush on uh, Sloane, who was Ferris Bueller's girlfriend, and uh, again, I'm a teacher, I love everything school-related, and so I think that uh, that's such a, a funny little backside and uh, a great movie, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. I, I totally recommend it. Uh, and my favorite thing that I've been reading as of recent, and a couple of people probably know this, the name of the hardcore kingdom, my 1000 Days Kingdom, is called Lycos. And the reason my favorite book that I've been reading is uh, called Red Rising. Uh, yeah, I forget who it's by. Um, but it's a wonderful dystopian novel that takes place a couple thousand years in the future where humans have destroyed Earth and um, other people that had more money were able to go and colonize other planets. But eventually, these other societies that ended up developing on the other planets, they thought, you know what, um, we're, we're actually better than the people on Earth. Like, we're more technologically capable, epigenetics, and kind of being able to choose genes for your children became a thing and just altering your physical abilities so that you can run 10 times as fast and you're 10 times as strong. Uh, so really creating different races of people that ended up being like, you know what, we're not all equal. And so they went to uh, destroy Earth and create their own societies and whatnot that are based on classes, uh, like races of people. Uh, with a huge social uh, hierarchy and order um, and it takes place from one of the slave classes and realizing uh, a huge the huge um, paradigm of his class's placement in the world and the rebellion that goes off of it it's w a wonderful wonderful book um, definitely more of an adult novel it can uh, it can be a lot <laughs> um, but I highly recommend it Red Rising uh, is the name of it once again. Um, and I love reading just like a chapter or two a night, but I gotta be, I gotta say it can be hard to put the book down, which, uh, is probably saying a lot from someone that loves to play Minecraft. And I did just realize I didn't respond to the second half of Indiana's question. My favorite food is hamburgers. Uh, oftentimes on Fridays, I grill up hamburgers and that sort of thing. I might make some this evening uh, after stream for myself uh, and that's what I usually do. It's kind of like a, a comfort thing for me and I think that I make them really well. I make bison burgers and I'll toss on the tomatoes and the pickles and the lettuce and some onions, uh, a little bit of bacon with it as well, um, some avocado too. I really load up the burger, some ketchup and mustard uh, and I do some chips too on the side. and. Uh, or I'll do some sweet potato fries if I'm feeling a little bit healthier, but um, hamburgers are totally my treat. <laughs> um, and I probably could live off of them for the rest of my life. The next question that we have here is, who are your Minecraft inspirations? And I'm just going to start off saying that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rattle off a couple of names that just instantly come to mind, but I am always being exposed to new Minecraft content creators and uh, really too many to say. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll just say people like Bars, uh, people like Cobb, uh, Mythical Sausage, Flip uh, are big ones. BH is a big one. I'm Shrammy too. Uh, Flip is in, uh, no, um, not Flip, uh, Flam is in there too. Um, man, just uh, Schwepp, uh, Yogi Man. I, I, I feel bad. There's so many people that I'm sure I'm, I'm just missing out in that sort of thing. But um, genuinely, uh, so many different people are able to uh, flip the coin. Etat is one of them. NC is a huge one of them. Uh, bring people that are kind of uh, bring a new paradigm to this uh, to this story. Soup Soup's another one. Flow State's another one. Man, I can just uh, Tom. I, I can just keep going. Uh, <laughs> um, I really, yeah, just I love love all the different ways that you can um, show a Minecraft story. Uh, and so I think I take a lot from a lot of different people. Uh, and that's what makes my content my own. You know, we're all playing with similar tools, but how can you shine your light on this game through the creative process and that sort of thing? Um, and I would say the biggest one, excuse me, the biggest one has got to be B-double-O. Uh, his builds are something, yeah, that just absolutely, just totally astound me. Um, and so I really want to become a better builder this year in particular, so I'm going to be looking a lot to him. And then... Uh, just builders in general, and then people that are really able to throw the best twist that they can on cinematics in Minecraft is also uh, something that's really fun for me to watch. Uh, and so I, I do think that people like Cobb and Bars, uh, NC, BH uh, are really big people in that game. Uh, Etat as well, a huge figure. Uh, and Soup Soup, yeah. Um, you know, getting to a different level of cinematic and storytelling within a specific vibe and cadence and flow and um, simplicity, minimalism, but so much detail and beauty within the edit itself too. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, just so many people, but, uh, you know, even in terms of, uh, you know, people like Captain Pineapple and Buzzy and Chespy, um, a lot of people that are doing like UHC and more like, uh, fun of events as opposed to like beautiful <laughs> that makes sense like just having a really good time taking inspiration for them too about like oh what'd be a fun prank to do in the lotus smp or what'd be a fun way to collaborate with other people and that sort of stuff and so yeah uh just so many people and that's one of the beautiful things about minecraft being one of the best you know biggest games in the world the skill ceiling is you know almost uh impassable and the amount of people that are at a high level of um creative quality and ability uh that you can take inspiration from whether it be in game or their ability to show what they've made in game uh is it's like endless and i i just love it i gotta say our next comment is what is your proudest accomplishment and if i'm being honest although my proudest video that i've ever made is 1000 days in minecraft hardcore that that full movie uh you know just so many hundreds and thousands of hours put into the entire thing um, i'm so proud of that video but in particular i'm so proud of myself of this year um and doing everything that i set myself out to on july 28th which flam if you're still hanging out dude i think i forgot to say happy birthday flam's birthday is on the 29th <laughs> i think i forgot um but on the 28th of last year i set out to put my best foot forward and do everything that i could to be successful um on youtube uh and I, you know, I first wanted to make a 100 days video, uh, and I, I did that. And then I wanted to start off a hardcore kingdom with the hope of uh, making it to 1,000 days. And I did that. And on the side during that, um, members have seen it. I also had a separate series where I built something every single week and just saw the gradual, uh, you know, grow of a village over three months of time. Uh, you know, on the side of making the kingdom videos. Um, and while doing that, um, really get to know so many different content creators that led me into getting into the Lotus SMP, um, which was something that I'd really wanted. And then I was able to do it. Um, and in January of the year, I chose instead of doing a video 
every month to do a video every two weeks and then to do a video every week and then to start the second channel and do extra videos on top of that. And now we have the third VODs channel for streams and I've been doing even more with streaming as well too on top of everything. Um, and so I'm just so proud. I'm The most accomplishment is being able to have done it all on top of um, being in graduate school and working multiple jobs and I did sacrifice the social life <laughs> as I can tell, as you guys can tell with, you know, rigidity um, and that sort of thing. But, you know, I set these really high goals for myself and um, I blew every single one out of the water uh, and just incredibly successful. But it wasn't one thing. It was just the fact that I was able to do it because um, I set some really, really high bars for myself, like goals like dream expectations, I really worked dog heartedly this year to make everything work. And here we are one year later and everything has changed, uh, not only in my life in real life, but also here with all of you all. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for being here. I got to say that. And our last comment of the day, if you've gotten this far in the video, thank you again for being here. And consider leaving a like on the video or hopping into a stream at some point in time or join our discord. We have, uh, as you can tell, a ton of really good people uh, that love Minecraft, who love really trying to become the best version of themselves. And I'm so glad to have joined you all. But our last comment of the day, once again, comes from myself. <laughs> and um, every comment, if you ask a question in the comments, I answer all of them. But uh, I, you know, it's good to ask questions to yourself too, right? Um, and I'm asking myself, what is your favorite thing about being a content creator? And if I'm being honest, it's you all. Um, you know, I, that's kind of hard to elaborate on. And I'm pretty good with words, <laughs> generally speaking, I think. Uh, you guys are what, you know, keeps the wheel moving. Um, and I get immense satisfaction about seeing my own videos but i didn't realize how impactful it would be to find so many real real cool authentic inspirational people uh and to have everyone be pushing each other uh to be better and to be at their best um and that's been so cool regardless if if you have five subscribers uh, seven, I think, like Break the Net, um, you know, a thousand subscribers like Dino or like Cobb, you know, 20 or 50,000 subscribers like Shram or Kevin. You guys have made the difference in my life. Um, it's you guys are really what makes this rewarding. Um, getting to chit chat with you all and knowing what's up in your lives and seeing that you guys are real people out here giving real support. And I spend many hours behind the screen just making the best things that I can for you. And a lot of people listening to this probably feel the same way, but it's a different feeling to be heard and to be valued and to be appreciated. And I know how many people in their lives don't have that feeling at all, whether it be from friends or from family or from work or from school. They don't have other people around them that, you know, makes them feel valued for who they are and that's what we have here in the sanctuary uh and i didn't think that that was that was not my intention when i started minecraft content creation you know i just wanted to do it i just wanted to do it and so i did it um and then i got better and i wanted to do well and i wanted to meet people and i wanted to be successful and then in the pursuit of doing that, I realized that the most important thing about it was the people that I found along the way. And that's all of you. Uh, and that's why I know that I'm not going anywhere um, because I feel like there's something here um, and there's a real connection to be had and really something to be to build together. And so you, know, regardless of, you know, the, the view count or the likes or any of that sort of stuff, um, those of you that have taken a chance on me have really taken a chance because for me, time is the most important commodity. Uh, there's no getting that back. And I spent a lot of my time doing this, right? And uh, it isn't glamorous, um, but it's truly from the heart and it's me in a way that most people don't get in general. Um, 
And so thank you for being here.